Welcome to another episode. I'm Caleb James Delisle, and I'm going to talk to you about bandwidth and how monopolistic telecoms have managed to fix the residential internet market. I'm also going to talk about PacketCrypt, the world's first bandwidth hard proof of work algorithm which I created and how PacketCrypt has the chance to break the big telecom juggernaut. So let's get right in. You may be asking yourself, how is it possible that bandwidth can be overpriced and underpriced at the same time? And it's all based on this slippery little trick called oversubscription. Now, how does it work? Well, imagine that you're buying an internet connection. Like most people, you probably check the speed of the connection and the price because you want the fastest internet at the lowest price. So you see an offer, it's 100 megabit fiber for $50 a month. Now, an actual 100 megabit line costs somewhere between $100 and $300 a month, and that's without even considering the telephone poles and fiber optic cable. So how on earth does a telecom make any money? Well, they sell the same line to dozens if not hundreds of subscribers. So instead of paying $100 a month and selling it for $50 a month, they're, saying they're paying $100 a month and selling it to 20 people for $50 a month each. The gamble is that not everyone will be using their internet at the same time. And as long as they keep winning, that's a 90% profit margin. So maybe 30% to do some minimal infrastructure maintenance, 30% to bribe the right people so they're not investigated as a monopoly, and the other 30% goes right in their pockets. Now, the craziest thing about all this is that nobody can compete with them on their price. How does anybody offer a 100 megabit service if the cost to buy the line is more than the price they're selling it for? But it gets even worse. The more customers you have, the more you can oversell because the chance that they're all using the internet at the same time becomes lower and lower. And the bigger an ISP you become, the harder you can negotiate on price for your internet access. If you become big enough, then the companies that used to be your providers might even become your customers. Now you may be asking, what about those bandwidth heavy services like Netflix and Hulu? Everybody watches movies at night, so don't they call the ISPs bluff? And the answer is no. Major ISPs know that if services like Netflix and Hulu are slow, people aren't going to use them. So they make deals with these companies to directly connect their networks to the ISP. So the ISP doesn't have to pay a dime. In some cases, the ISP might even make money off the deal. And what's the streaming company to do? Once one company does it, the, all the customer knows is that that service is faster. And if your service is the slow one, then you're the problem. Major ISPs are like the mob bosses of the internet. Nobody can replace them and everyone has to pay. And they get to pretty much decide what people are going to pay. In European countries like France and Romania, where there are strong anti-monopoly laws, in France, a thousand megabits is 50 euros. In Romania, it's 20. Of course, these lines are oversubscribed as well, but it just shows you how wide the margin is between what it costs and what they charge. The whole reason why this trick works in the first place is because people are buying internet and they're not using it. If people used all the internet that they bought, then ISPs would be forced to price the internet fairly. So to make this happen, I created PacketCrypt, the world's first bandwidth hard proof of work. The way PacketCrypt works is that mining requires a mix of energy and bandwidth, and using more bandwidth allows you to use less energy. So when everyone starts using lots of bandwidth, now the equation's turned on its head. Oversubscription stops working. ISPs are forced to raise their prices to a fair cost of the service, and critically, competition from startups becomes possible. And PacketCrypt is not just an idea. It's the basis for the PKT blockchain. We already have a two-year-old community, and we're moving somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 gigabits per second across the internet. It's not much for now, but things are just getting started. And we don't expect monopolistic telecoms to play by the rules either. They're probably going to try to block anyone who is mining PacketCrypt or even cut them off from the service. Our solution is this. We're going to compete with them because when one person in an apartment building is forced to buy a dedicated business internet in order to mine packet, now there's a dedicated line into that building and everyone else in that building can buy internet access from them. I'll talk about the internet sharing and bandwidth marketplace in a future episode, but until then, be excellent and we'll see you on the next one.